Good morning, everyone. It is a muggy end of July morning, and I can avoid this job no longer. Not like I've been avoiding it, it's just been busy. But I need to address some harvesting and food preservation in the garden. Uh, my garlic is pretty much ready, but it is gonna stay in the ground for a bit. But my beets need some attention. I've started to harvest some beans and the peas, of course, have, we've been harvesting for a while, kale and cabbage. But I kind of left the beets and then realized they were pretty big. So I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna pickle some beets and, and take you along, but just gonna give you a quick overview of the garden here. Definitely not a full garden tour, but you can see the garlic is ready. So in the next couple of days, maybe tomorrow or in the beginning of next week, I'll get to it. But everything is looking so beautiful. This is the time of year where, you know, you really start to enjoy the beauty of the garden. I've got this big volunteer sunflower that's taller than me now and is about to pop. I have another one that I'll show you that just started to open this morning. Look at this beauty. This is my favorite time of year when the sunflowers start to open. It's so gorgeous. So here we go. Here's the beets. Today we got to beat the beets. Um, and so, I mean, we've been eating beet greens here and there with dinners and things like that and stir fries and salads. Uh, but that's a lot of beet greens. So these, I'm going to feed a couple to the to the rabbits, but the rest I think we're going to feed to the chickens and the compost. I, I actually talk about feeding my compost because it is really important. Soil management is key to good uh, gardening. So yeah, a lot of them are going to go to the compost. Anywho, let's get to harvesting these bad boys. Also, these are the dragon's tongue beans that are ready to be harvested and they are delicious. I might can some of those actually. Mm. The word I would use to describe these is buttery sweet. Mm. So good. All right, let's roll. I'm gonna have to do this in stages. <laughs> this is one row. Oh boy, okay. I think a wheelbarrow would have been more appropriate for this scenario. Oh goodness. Ooh. Change of plans, I can't even lift it. Okay, so I left a few of the smaller beets in the rows and those will be for eating and for meal prep, but now I have to trim the tops off of all of these or trim the greens off. I'm gonna keep some of the greens, so I'll pick out the nice ones. Uh, and the rest are gonna go in the compost. And so when you trim the tops of the beets for canning, if you, le if you cut them off and you open the beet, when you boil those, it, your water is going to get dyed. Most people know what beet juice and how beet juice stains. So what I do is I leave just about an inch, so I trim them off. I leave it like that. 
So then when I go to peel in, clean the beets, and I also leave the root on as well when I boil them the first time. And I'll show you how to do that, but that's how I clean them in this step. Now I'm just going to put them all into this basket uh, and, that, and that's how I'm going to, to rinse them. Look at that monster. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. That is going to be a lot of pickled beets, but that's exciting because I am canning for the next two years. So we still have a couple of jars on the shelf, but this has to be for 23, kind of 24 seasons. So that's good. Get those hosed off. And then I'm actually going to, because I created a lot of green matter or green material. So before I go inside, I'm actually going to scoop some of our uh, chicken coop clean out so the carbon or the brown material on top of the green or the nitrogen containing material so that the compost process starts to work. So in this bin we have all of the chicken clean out um, that I then shovel kind of over here into this bin. I've got some volunteer potatoes growing at the front here so I don't really want to disturb them so I'm going to try and shovel over them. All right, let's get these hosed off. So now that I've rinsed off the majority of the soil from the beets, they came out pretty clean. So I just give them a quick hose off. Now we have to boil them to loosen the skin so we can peel them and prepare them to can them up. Really from here on out, you have to think about uh, wearing clothes that you don't care if they get beet juice on them um, and wearing anything that you don't care about getting dirty. So I've got some old clothes on here because from here on out, it, it gets pretty purple or red. Uh, so. The next step is to boil your beets so that you can peel them. And so I boil mine, canning always takes place in the hottest time of the year. And so I try and minimize the amount of time I'm spending on the stove inside. And so this is a step that you can easily do. Actually, you could do all of this outside if you wanted, but I just do the, the boiling part. So I use a turkey cooker with a propane um, tank and I use the basket of the turkey cooker and all I do is fill this with beets so I'm going to do that now but leave it out until my water boils so I'm probably going to have to do a couple um, of batches probably maybe two but that's not that's not too bad um, and I boil them at a boil for about 20 20 minutes you want to to cook them enough that the skin peels easily for you and that you're not struggling to get the, the skin off. And especially for these, these bruisers, they're going to need, they're going to need some time in the cooker. So I try to pick out all the bigger ones. Um, and then because they need a little bit longer and then I keep all of the kind of smaller ones for, for the second batch. Cause they need, they'll need a little bit less time. So I'm going to get the, um, the cooker fired up here and get that water boiling. So while I wait for the water to start to boil, I like to put the beets in when the water is boiling. While I wait for the water to boil, I'm going to go inside and sterilize all of my jars. So you have to make sure that all of the jars that you're going to use are sterilized. And I'm going to need quite a few. You can see I've got quite a bit of beets. So yeah, I better get rolling. Okay, the water's boiling, so I'm going to lower my beets down and do this slowly. Put the lid on. And I'll let those go for 20, about 20 minutes. And inside, I'm still sterilizing jars. I'm just gonna use my knife to make sure that they're soft, and they are. So we're just gonna take these out. Let them drain off. I'm going to leave that water boiling because I have to do the next batch. 
but I'm just going to put them into this, dump them into this bowl. Fill the basket and put these in to boil. For the next step, I wear these rubber gloves and it's not because of the beet dye, it's actually for the heat because I peel these right out of um, the boiling pot. And so this is how, well, this is what you want the beets to be like. So you want the, the skin just to be able to peel off just like that. So it's really easy, I'll show you kind of I'm on a, a chair here, but I'll show you. So it's really easy just to peel them when you've boiled them long enough. I just take the top off and this is my compost. And then I just use the knife to kind of scrape the skin off. There we go. The skin just peeled, peeled right off. I try and get any extra bits. And then all I do is quarter them. So I'll just cut them into chunks that then will go into the jar. So really I just make my pieces about that big uh, and any beets that are about this size, I just leave. And so it's really great when the, the, the skin just peels off like this, like you can just hold it and peel off the whole, the whole skin. That's, that's kind of the point that you want the, the, them to be at when you, and when they're big like this, some of these are pretty big, but they're still tasty. So I'll kind of quarter them and then cut them into eights. And then I pick up the bigger pieces and I dice them down a little bit smaller. Okay, we've got one big bowl processed. The other ones are done boiling. We have to peel them. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take you in and show you how to make the brine. I have all of my jars sterilized. I hope this is going to be enough. I've got a number of quarts and then some pints, no half pints, that should be good. I also have two leftover brines from last year. One is actually a pickle brine, but I don't really, I'm not really too worried about it. Um, I'm gonna use it. And the other is a beet brine from last year. So if you have leftover brine and enough volume and you have room in your canner, pickle it or, or don't pickle it, can it. Uh, and you can use it next year. So I'm just gonna dump those two in and that's not going to mess up our measurements for this brine. So now um, I five times this recipe for the amount of beets that we have here. And we actually might even have to make more, but I'm gonna start with what I normally use and go from there. So the recipe calls for one cup of vinegar, or pickling vinegar. So I'm going to do five cups of pickling vinegar. Five cups of water. The recipe calls for one cup of sugar, so I'm going to put five cups of sugar. Ooh, baby. And it calls for a half teaspoon of pickling salt, so I'm going to do two and a half teaspoons. your left shoulder for good luck. I will put the recipe in the description below so that you're not confused, but a single um, brine recipe is one cup of water, one cup of vinegar, one cup of sugar, so equal parts of all those, and a half teaspoon of salt. You could use apple cider vinegar as well if you like, but I just used white pickling vinegar. That's how we like this recipe. Um, and then to each jar, you have to add the spices. So, to each 
500 milliliter jar to each um, pint, you're going to add two allspice berries and three cloves. When I and I just double that for a quart. So if you're using quarts, you're going to use four allspice berries and six cloves. So that's how I do it. So I'm going to add all that now um, and get ready to fill the jars. I have to bring the brine up to a rolling boil for 10 minutes. So while I'm filling the jars, I'm going to just get this all mixed together and boiling. So if you're not sure what allspice berries are, I have to get them at the bulk store. I have a hard time finding them in regular grocery stores. So two allspice berries, two, 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 two. Okay, so I have enough of those, but I do need to get more. And then three cloves in the pint jars and sex in the quartz. If you wanted, when you're making the pickled beets, you can add anything else to the jars that might interest you. So if you were a garlic person or you liked garlic, you could add a garlic. If you wanted to add onions, I've done that before. I've just made onion rings, little thin slices of onion and put them in the bottom. But we really just like the, the simple recipe with the beets and the spices and this brine. So you can really um, doctor it up however you want it as long as you're making sure that you, you make the brine correctly. That is the key, making sure that you have the appropriate amount of acid for the water bath canning process. So now I'm going to fill the jars with beets, first of all, to give me an idea of how many jars I'm actually going to need. And second, just to get it ready for when the brine is ready so that I can start processing in the water bath canner. And for these, I use, I, I, I fill the beets up to about an inch of headspace. And then for the brine, I do to about half inch headspace. So now I'm going to add the brine to the jars and I'm filling it to a half inch head space. Now I'm just gonna burp all of the jars and then I'm gonna top up and to do that, you can just tap the jar on the counter gently. Make sure you've got something soft underneath like an old tea towel. And then I can use my handy dandy tool as well to check for <clears throat> half inch that space, which some of these can get a little bit more liquid. And you can also use this tool to get the bubbles out if you want, you just ram it down the sides of the of the jar, which I don't like doing that because it displaces the, the beets. So I, I prefer to, to burp them like I, like I was doing. One of the other things I just quickly wanted to mention is if you are new to canning, this is a fantastic resource for making sure that you are following, I talked about the science before, the scientific process of canning. So um, it's called The Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving, um, and I would highly recommend it. As you can see, I don't use it very much, um, but I have used it just to double check headspace, like that's what I did just to make sure it was a half inch headspace. Um, but you know, I think it's a really great resource. All right, so now I'm going to wipe the lids with paper towel and vinegar. And you can see, although it doesn't look dirty, I always get some off. So I will do this until I don't get any more pink on the paper towel. We put the lids on and we are going to water bath can those for 30 minutes. And then as those are 
processing, I'm going to finish peeling the beets. Actually, Brian's doing it right now. Finish peeling the beets and put the rest of the lids on these so that they're ready to go for the next round. That's it. We ended up with seven quarts and eight pints of pickled beets. If you've never tried it before, I highly recommend. They're really, really tasty. If you haven't grown your own beets, you can get them at uh, your local market or even the grocery store and can them up to make your own pickled beets to enjoy throughout the winter. It was a super busy day today. We actually started the day canning six quarts of pickled eggs. If you'd seen in other videos, I had all those eggs stacked up. That's what I was waiting for to get enough to make pickled eggs. It's one of our favorite ways to preserve and to eat um, eggs. So between that and the beets, it's been a busy day. I think I started this morning at about, I don't know, six o'clock peeling eggs and it's one o'clock now. So uh, and we've been busy from start to finish. So we're ready for a little bit of downtime this afternoon. I might go work in the garden and on our outhouse project. But anyways, have a really great day. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.